um, the thing is, you being around these guys and everything, um, rumor has it you were pretty deal decent at stealing cars. How quickly were you able to, you know, break in and, and get a car car started? Real fast, like gone in sixty seconds type of shit. It's so like, uh, so I'll tell you how we used to do it. Okay. Yeah. And, and eventually, we actually uh, got more. Uh, Tech savvy, let's say. But the way yeah. it started, we used to use a center punch, and you go up yeah. to the window, you push it, and it, and it set, like you, it's the same thing for your house. It has right. a spring in it, and when it pops, it shatters the window. Right. So if there's an alarm, the first thing you do is you you pop the you know the hood, and then you got a second guy that rips the noise off. Then we used to use what you call a pulley. Uh, it's actually used in body shops. Okay, you just bang twice into the ignition, you twist it in, you screw it in, and you just rip it out. And when you do that, there's little teeth inside the, you know, the ignition there, and you stick the screwdriver in, start it, and you're gone. It's really fast. I love it. So basically, George, who does our clips, we got a perfect clip on how to steal, steal a car in 60 seconds. I know cars are a little bit different now, but nevertheless, like it's nice little uh, didactic training there. All right. So usually when you're around these guys, right, Johnny Boy Ruggiero, his father was quack quack. His father was, you know, at the time at least or, or before then, uh, mob royalty in that area, right? Uh, but typically you become friends with these guys, yes. but you offer some value, right? Like, the, let's be honest, the mob is kind of selfish. Were you like the car guy? A lot of was, value. You know, a lot of value. Yeah. What, what was your, what, what did you offer these guys? I so the deal with them was, all right, so for example, uh, I was big on, I, I'm known for stick-ups, and that's what I used to do. I I, I probably did, I know, I, I, it could be a little more, a little less, but I'll just say, let's say I did 20 of them, okay? Yeah. But uh, so I did about three big stick-ups with a lot of marijuana, which involved like way over 100 pounds. Now I'm a 17-year-old kid, so... Yeah. I was able to move some of that on the street and I'd set up little spots with little Spanish kids in the area and stuff like that. But to dump the big weight, like, so let's say uh, one hit, I had 130 pounds. I, I dumped a hundred pounds to Johnny boy. And, um, I kept the 30 and sold it slowly and then slowly in the, in, in the neighborhood type of deal. But you Got know, it. they were passing me the cash. They had the money. So that, that's what it was really about. I also, one time I, I robbed Joe, Galante, uh, they did a silver heist, and uh, I winded up robbing him for it. And the reason why I did that is because I, I was at that point I was I was still involved with you know the kids from Ridgewood. I mean, I was doing the stick ups with them. Johnny Boy wasn't doing stick ups with, with me. Yeah. You understand? Right, right. So anyway, but make a long story short, they tried to snake me on that job, and I got pissed off. So I wind up stealing it and helping him look for it. Make a long story short, the silver. Uh, I brought it to my cousin's house who lived across the street from where Gotti used to live at the time. And uh, so make a long story short, I had all the jewelry laid out on the, on the apartment on the floor. And J this is how I actually kind of met Johnny Boy, sort of. Uh, he walked in because he knew my cousin and uh, he walked in and he was with Charles Coniglia. So make a long story short, they were really impressed. I'm a young kid. I got all this fucking jewelry on the floor. Uh, so Eventually, what wound up happening, Johnny Boy bought it, and supposedly Junior got he got it, and he put it inside of a flea market. And the reason why he did that was because it was really that heist they did was silver. All right. So back then, if you try to take silver by the weight, it ain't worth that much. You know, it was like right. sixty pounds, but it was yeah. only worth like seven grand. Yeah. But I mean. individual pieces, it was worth like sixty grand. So Junior Gotti put it inside of a flea market and he set up a stand. That's what I was told. You understand? Interesting. So, so okay. So you stole this silver and it's a man. Oh, I, I, I'm going to find out who has it. And then you gave it back to him and you basically won some favor, more or less. Was that it? Because then you kind of stole it and then showed yeah. him where it was. Oh, I thought you stole it from yeah. Joe. <laughs> And then made it look like you found it to help him out. I got it. I, 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 I misinterpreted that. I got it. Okay. So No, no, no. Um, no, he was mad. He, he was mad the next day. Like, where the fuck's it at? But what wind up happening is Frankie was actually working at that place, too, uh, where it happened at. 
So I stole the key one day and I made a copy of it a few blocks away. So when I actually took the silver out of the club, all I yeah. did was open the lock and I took the lock with me. I paid some Dominican kid to watch me because across the street from that club was Vito Grimaldi's coffee shop. Got so I had a Dominican kid looking out for me outside. And uh, anyway, I took the silver and I ran to Howard Beach. My